Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Journey Today Show. My name is David. And I'm Corey. Hey, Corey. What you got there? Rocket boots. Rocket boots? You mean boots with rockets on them? Yeah, rocket boots. What's so hard to understand about this? What's hard to understand is what in the world you're going to do with rocket boots. Uh, well, I think it's pretty obvious, David. I'm gonna fly to heaven with them. You're going to use rocket boots to fly to heaven? Uh, okay, Corey, uh, there are so many problems with this, but let's start with the safety issue. I really don't think you should be wearing those inside. If those go off, you're going to fly straight through the ceiling. David, how silly do you think I am? I already thought about that. That's why I installed a safety feature that keeps that from happening. Okay, what kind of a safety feature? They're voice activated. No matter what you do, they won't launch until you say, bye everybody. <laughs> Okay, Corey. Okay, there you go, Corey. Take it easy, buddy. I got gotcha. you. Is this heaven? It looks like the JTS studio. And how did you get here first? Uh, Corey, I hate to break it to you, buddy, but this isn't heaven. This is the JTS studio. Your plan failed on so many levels. It did? Yeah. You activated your boots while you were still in the studio. That's impossible. They won't launch until I say, bye! Oh, Corey, no, 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 no. Whatever you do, don't say that until we can get those boots off of you. Can I take them off now? Well, I tried, man. You must have bought those things three sizes too small because I cannot get them off. Uh, don't worry, though. We'll cut them off after the show. <sighs> oh, okay. Good idea. Y you know, now that I think of it, I feel a little embarrassed. I should have known that you can't get to heaven with rocket boots. Yeah, I know how you feel. Uh, but honestly, you're not the only one who's been confused about how to get to heaven. In fact, in today's Bible story, there's a guy named Nicodemus who was really confused. Did he run into a billboard? Uh, no, uh, he ran into Jesus. And some of the things Jesus told him were really hard for Nicodemus to understand. Like what? Well. Great question. But you know what? Instead of me just telling you, I think it would help all of us understand heaven more if we read the story for ourselves. So let's do this. In just a second, press pause. Then open your Bible and read the verses on the screen. When you're finished, we'll see you back here. To be honest, I can kind of see why Nicodemus was confused. I mean, the idea of being born again seems really strange at first. You're right, it does. But it helps to understand who Nicodemus was. You see, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. They were like the top religious leaders of their time. They thought they were better than everyone else because they spent a lot of time in the temple, they knew a ton about God's word, and they followed all of God's rules as closely as possible. In fact, they thought they were so good that they could get to heaven all on their own. Do you think they were right? Oh, no way. No matter how good you are, it doesn't get you any closer to heaven. You know what? That makes me think of a really good challenge. Yeah. Actually, no, it, it, it doesn't. I, I've got nothing. Oh, well, wait, does that mean we're not gonna have a challenge today? I guess not. Not unless someone magically appears with an idea. Did I hear somebody say they needed the assistance of one Ricky Q Raccoon? No. Great, that's when I do my best work. 
It's time for a game show called Step to Heaven! Welcome, ladies and sherps. I'm your host, Ricky Raccoon. And joining me are Tweedledee and Tweedle David. Uh, my name is Tweedle Corey. It's just Corey. You can call us Corey and David. All right, all right, Corey and David. During this competition, you will race to see who can take enough steps to get to heaven first. David, you can hit the button first to spin. You memorized every word in the Bible. Take zero steps closer to heaven. What? Zero steps? Sorry about that, David. All right, Corey, it's your turn now. Give the spinner a spin. You went to church 12,000. 349 times this year. Take zero steps closer to heaven. Seriously? Not even one step? Nope, Corey, not even one step. David, it's your turn again. You sold all your stuff and use the money to feed hungry kittens. Take zero steps closer to heaven. Oh, come on. That's a really nice thing to do. I should be a little bit closer to heaven. I'm afraid not, David. All right, Corey, it's your turn again. You helped an old lady cross a stream filled with crocodiles. Take zero steps closer to heaven. Whoa, come on. She'd be croc food if it weren't for me. That's got to be worth more steps. Oh, my. How unfortunate. Those were some incredibly good deeds. Sadly, they've gotten you both a grand total of zero steps closer to heaven. If my calculations are correct, you should be arriving in heaven by... Never! <laughs> Fortunately, the game isn't over just yet. David and Corey hit the button together. Jesus replied, What I'm about to tell you is true. No one can see God's kingdom unless they are born again. John 3.3 3. Hey, I recognize this verse. It's from today's story. What Jesus is saying is that there is only one way to get to heaven. It's not about how much you read your Bible or how many times you come to church or how many good things you do. Those are all great things to do, but they don't get you any closer to heaven. The only way to get to heaven is to be born again. Yeah, and being born again doesn't mean you're reborn as a baby. It means that you start a new life by following Jesus. Well, it sounds like you guys are on to something. Why don't you give the spinner one more spin? You become a born-again follower of Jesus. Advance straight to heaven! Heaven! We did it! Yes! 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 <laughs> that concludes this episode of Steps to Heaven! Now back to our regularly scheduled program. That was weird. 
tell me about it. But I guess there's still one question we have to answer. How exactly did you become a born again follower of Jesus? You know what? That's a great question. But before we answer it, maybe we should see what the kids think. So what do you think? What do you think it means to be a follower of Jesus? And how do you become one? Press pause and discuss. Hey everybody, welcome back. Becoming a born again follower of Jesus is as easy as ABC. The A stands for admit. If you want to become a follower of Jesus, you have to admit that you sin and ask God for forgiveness. God loves you so much, he'll forgive you no matter how much you've sinned. The B stands for belief. Believe that Jesus died for your sins. When we believe Jesus died for our sins, we can be forgiven. And finally, the C stands for choose. Choose to follow Jesus for the rest of your life. Choose to live your life the way he wants you to instead of how you want to. Admit, believe, choose. If you've never done that before, you can do that right now. Yeah. God wants us to be good and do nice things, but that's not what gets us to heaven. Only following Jesus can do that. That's right. And if you need help with that decision, you can ask your parents or a leader at church. Yeah, for sure. It's the best decision you could ever make. So good. And so true. Hey kids, thanks for hanging out with us today. We had a blast. Actually, I think you had the biggest blast, if you know what I mean. Ugh, don't remind me. In fact, let's wrap this up so I can go cut these boots off my feet. You got it, buddy. We'll see you next week, kids. Yeah, bye everybody. Oh no, my beautiful billboard.